Greetings, friends. And mostly enemies. What are you doing here, enemies? You little rascals, get off my channel, silly enemies. Today, we're talking about another no-no that I'm consistently noticing in books I'm reading. And it's very frustrating. And it should not make it past the drafting process. And so we got to talk about it. And it's plot holes. I don't understand why it's so hard to avoid plot holes, but apparently it is for a lot of writers and it shouldn't be because there's a lot of steps you can take to avoid them. So one by one, we're going to get into it. Let's do it. Number one, outline your story. It, it, it like, uh, uh. outline your story. I get it, you're a pantser, and you like writing as you go, and you like just seeing where your story takes you. I do that a little bit too. I get it. Some of my best stuff has been just off the cuff, spontaneous, uh, this is a really good idea, I'm writing it, and I just make it part of the story. So I get it. But that doesn't stop you from outlining before and after. Say you outline a chapter, and your mids chapter and you suddenly say to yourself, you know, I just had a really great idea. I'm going to take the story in this direction. You can do that. That's basically what I do for all the times I have a great idea mid chapter. And then you go and you edit your outline for chapter five and chapter six and blah, blah, blah. You can make changes as you go, but an outline will help you avoid those plot holes. And it doesn't have to be a step-by-step -step anal retentive outline that basically tells you everything that's going to happen in a play-by-play. -play. It can be really vague. It can be chapter one, introduce character, thing A happens, thing B happens, introduce second character, end of chapter. Chapter two, thing A, thing B, thing C, etc., etc., introduce character. And it does not have to be super detailed. It can be a very vague idea, like character goes here, learns the truth. It can be something very specific, like character goes here, they do this by doing this, then they attain this for their trouble, and they use this to escape the situation. It can be as detailed or as vague as you want it. But the point is that when you have an outline in front of you, and you list everything that's gonna happen step by step, it gives you an idea if there's an inconsistency, a logical inconsistency, which leads to our next point. Point two, use Occam's razor. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, what's Occam's razor? I didn't go to college. Occam's razor basically amounts to this. The simplest explanation is usually the right one. And you might say to yourself, well, wouldn't that make my story boring? Wouldn't that make everything like super easy to figure out? Not necessarily, because you can use it in reverse. You can apply Occam's razor to the situation in your book and then say, this is the thing that's most reasonable and most easily explains the circumstances and events up until now. What's the opposite of that? And as long as it's still possible, it won't be a plot hole. As long as it's still reasonable, it won't be a plot hole. But using Occam's razor like this, this kind of reverse engineering of the razor, will help you reach for things that are unlikely but still possible. And even if you use Occam's razor just as it was intended and use that to decide where your plot is going next, I'd wager that if you still write your story well, it's still going to be fun and engaging because as readers and as cinema goers, we've become conditioned to expect the plot twist. We've become conditioned to look for the thing that is gonna be super surprising and no one saw it coming. And so if your story just goes exactly where you would think it would go, in this day and age, that's kind of a plot twist in and of itself. So do with that as you will. Number three. Use critique partners and beta readers. When I was writing my first and second novel, which the second is only in the rough draft phase at this point, I had beta readers and critique partners that I sent chapter by chapter. They got everything as I wrote it pretty much. 
and that allowed me to reinforce some weak plot points. It allowed me to improve dialogue and it gave me real time feedback of where my writing was going and if I was consistently maintaining the artistic level of excellence that I'm looking for. And that's a great resource to have. If you don't want to release your work to people as you're doing it real time, like I did, because you want to make sure it's copyrighted first, or because you want the whole thing done so that people can absorb the piece, the, the work in its entirety, it's understandable. And those are reasonable approaches. But do not just skip beta readers. Do not just skip critique partners. And for those of you who don't know, a critique partner comes before beta readers. Critique partners look at usually the rough draft, whereas beta readers, they get a version that's been edited a few times, just so that's clear. But use them. They're an invaluable resource. And if you say to yourself, well, what if they're harsh on my work? What if they have some really hard criticisms? That's literally the point. It's literally the point. Use them. You'll be glad you did, and you'll improve as a writer. Number four, ask yourself. Does this make sense? Do not expect suspension of disbelief to do all the work for you. We're all willing to accept dragons and magic if we pick up a fantasy book. What we are not willing to accept is a character who's portrayed or at least built up to be a strategic genius and then they go into battle and make a catastrophic blunder that an eighth grader could have avoided. It doesn't make sense. And this is one of the things I pointed out with the Savior Sister in my review. Go check it out. It's the most watched video on my channel at this point. And the main thing that I pointed out in that book as being one of the reasons I couldn't give it five stars is because it had a, a plot hole in that vein. And it would have been fairly easy in my opinion to get rid of that plot hole in the drafting phase because it could have been explained away. So, always ask yourself, does this make sense? If it doesn't make sense within the context of your story, if it doesn't make sense for the character, it needs to be reworked until it does make sense. Suspension of disbelief is only going to take you so far. And number five, this one's huge. Follow the rules of your own world. I've read books on more than one occasion where they bent or broke the rules that they established for their own world. The magic system, the politics, whatever, it doesn't matter. Following the rules of your world is important because it allows the reader to have a framework to work in and it allows the reader to understand your world and how it works. And if you can't follow the rules of your own world, then the reader can't understand what's going on. We have rules that function in the real world, and I'm not just talking about laws and rules of man, I'm talking about physics. And people understand how the real world works because we have physics. Gravity, for example. You don't write a book where it's an Earth-like planet and then gravity seems to not function as it should unless there's a damn good explanation for it. You need to follow your own rules. If your world building is half-assed and inconsistent, people are going to set your book down and not buy another one from you. So guys, those are my five quick tips on how to avoid plot holes. Do not release work that has significant plot holes and do not shy away from fixing plot holes just because it sounds like it's going to be an undertaking. Plot holes are one of the main things that will make people bag on a story, just rip it to shreds and never buy another book from you because they're frustrating and they feel lazy and poorly written and they're just not fun. A good story finds a solution to the problems within the rules that have been set for the story. That's what makes it compelling that we have this dire situation that we 
it, within the rules of the world, we had no idea how the situation was going to get resolved. And then the writer found a way to resolve it. That's what makes a really, really good conclusion to a story. All right, guys. Until next time. <laughs>